The top hat clink is a simple emerger pattern for finicky trout in stream or still water situations. Its simple design and buggy headgear make it a hard one for fish to resist. I'm using cream UTC 140 thread. 70 would be required for a smaller, sleeker bug. Start the thread on a size 16 Daiichi 1167 clink hammer style hook. Bring your thread down around the bend, stopping about the midway point to the jaws of your vise. Then you can grab a Sharpie marker. I'm using black to create the ribbing effect. I'm going to color both sides of about one inch of thread. This is going to create a really nice quill ribbing effect for the body. Make spiral wraps of thread back towards the eye of your hook to create the rib. You'll notice I've left my thread segments wide for this fly. Spin your thread clockwise prior to ribbing to get a more rounded, condensed rib section. With your thread now stationed at the top of the hook, where it flattens out on these clink hammers, we're going to tie in the top hat post using a 1 8 inch foam cylinder. Trim the foam at an angle to create a tapered foam point. We're going to tie the post material in facing forward. So I'll swing the bobbin over with my off hand to apply a capture wrap around the fat portion of this base before making securing wraps of thread over the tapered section of foam to lock it into place. Bring the thread back to the post and make wraps in front to help stand it up a bit and then around the base to solidify the posted material. Instead of wrapping a hackle around this post, we're going to use natural squirrel dubbing. Hair's mask would work just as well. I brushed up the fibers from a red fox squirrel cape before trimming the extended pieces to make some dubbing. After mixing the fibers thoroughly, I can prepare a dubbing loop by extending about 8 inches of thread from my bobbin, doubling it over my finger, and capturing both thread sections on the top of the hook shank with a few secure wraps. You can also use the split thread dubbing loop technique here if you prefer. Bring the thread back to the front of the hook. Then we can begin adding some of the dubbing to our loop, one section at a time. Don't be shy with this. I typically add three sections of dubbing, totaling about an inch to an inch and a half worth within the loop, and that does the trick for this size 16. Spin the materials up nicely with your favorite dubbing loop tool and begin wrapping around the hook on the back side of the foam post. Make one and a half wraps behind and then bring the dubbing around the post like you would the hackle for a parachute style fly before lifting the materials in the front and making two more wraps of dubbing under the front side of the post and then just behind the eye. Capture the loop with your tying thread and trim away any excess material. Add a few half hitches to lock your work into place, and then trim your thread. Next we're going to need to trim our post material. How you trim your post is going to determine the fly's riding position in the water. Keep the post to about one quarter inch or less. You can always trim it down on the water if it's too long. Finally, since we want this fly to be riding flat in the film, I'm going to trim off the underside materials from the belly of the fly, leaving us with a nice parachute style pattern with a little rat's nest top hat holding it in the film. Add a bit of head cement and this fly is ready to cast. When I fish the top hat, I'll add float into the foam post and to the squirrel dubbing. If fish are really picky, trim down that post material to change how it rides in the water. This is a really fun pattern to tie. I hope it helps you out on your home waters. Head over to your local fly shop and ask them for all the larva lace products you need to tie up some top hat clinks. They can go to HagensFish.com or they can call Lori to order some of the best fly tying materials on the market. Share your fly tying works of art on the Fly Tying University Facebook page. It's a growing community for all fly tires. Larva Lace is a proud partner of the Fish Stories Archive, helping them save angler voices for the future. Thanks for tying with Larva Lace. Here's the tight lines and well-tied flies.